arrived for our discussion related to Maxwell equations. Now, this Maxwell equations, so as you know, there are four laws of uh, laws are there in Maxwell equations, or four equations rather. So, one by one, we will discuss uh, the four Maxwell equations for time varying field, right? So, the first law is the Gauss law of electricity, right? So, this is Gauss law of electricity right so we will study both the uh, differential form and the integral form of this Gauss law Gauss law previously we have already studied that if there was uh, some kind of uh, you know volume is there and in between there is some point P and some magnetic flux uh, sorry electric flux lines are coming out towards the surface so if this is just so uh, I mean this volume is enclosed by this surface s so if the total number of uh, total electric flux that is passing through the surface will be same or will be equals to the charge that is contained within the surface right this was the Gauss law electricity so we'll simply uh, let us write the differential as well as the integral form of this Gauss, Gauss law of electricity which is also the Maxwell first law first equation right so the differential form was del dot d equal to rho v right this was the differential form and the integral form will be closed surface integral of d ds equals to rho v dv integral of rho v dv so as you can see that it is related relation between the surface and the volume integral rho v is actually the volume charge density that we have studied before so let us write the law again so this is Maxwell first equation so this is electric flux denoted as xi passing through a surface is, is equal to the total charge enclosed by that charge enclosed by that surface by that surface so this was the first law of Gauss law of electricity or the first Maxwell equation. So let us now come to the discussion related to our second law of Maxwell equations, right? So the second law of Maxwell is the Gauss law of magnetism. So this Gauss law of magnetism. Magnetism, right? So again, let us see the differential form and the integral form. It was del dot B equals to zero and surface to surface integral of BDS equals to zero right see what I'm doing that I'm writing both the differential form and the integral form differential form integral form so you'll write both the differential and integral form of all the laws so what happens sometimes they ask either to write the differential form of Maxwell equation only and sometimes they ask the integral form of Maxwell equation only so depending on the question we can uh, write whether uh, write both uh, the differential form and uh, the integral form also right I mean that depends on the question they'll ask you so let us see the Gauss law of magnetism it states it, it states that no isolated magnetic poles can exist no isolated magnetic pole can exist right so this is means that if there is in some magnetic poles are there so the magnetic poles cannot be isolated i mean if there is some north pole is present there must be there are, uh, 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 south pole is also present i mean the polarity both the polarities has to be present i mean the magnetic poles cannot exist isolated right so uh, and they are continuous in nature so these are continuous in nature these are not discrete so this is continuous in nature and also forms closed loop right and another part was there so we can I mean from this law we can say that thus this con thus we can say we can say magnetic flux through a closed surface is zero right 
So we can also conclude that magnetic flux through a closed surface is zero, right? So also that means that magnetic force is conservative, right? That is magnetic flux is conservative in nature, in nature, right? So if it is unequal to zero, this zero, if this is unequal to zero, that in that case magnetic flux we go, we will not be able to call that as conservative. But if it is zero, since it is zero, we can call this magnetic flux as conservative in nature, right? So next third law of Maxwell is our Faraday's law that we have already discussed. This Faraday law, right? So differential form. Let us see what differential form is. Del cross E equals to minus dB dt. Right, and the integral form is linear line integral of E dl will be equals to minus of d dt surface integral of B ds. Right, so this was the Maxwell form. This one is your differential form, uh, Faraday's law, differential form of Faraday's law, and this is the integral or uh, integral form of this Faraday's law. What is say Faraday's law? The EMF around a closed path closed path is equal to the time derivative of the magnetic displacement magnetic displacement through any surface bounded by the path right so that means the electromotive force that is being used we already started about this electromotive force that means if there is any circuit is present and there is some time varying field is there and that means that is generating magnetic flux so this induces an emf within that circuit that we have already discussed so this faraday's law i mean this third law of maxwell states that the emf around the closed path will be equal to the time derivative of the magnetic displacement this and through any surface bounded by that path that means it will be a closed surface integral right so this is the third law of uh, faraday's law and the last law let us see now the last law so the fourth law of uh, fourth law of this magnetic uh, i mean maxwell equation is our ampere circuit law right so ampere circuit law this we already have we have studied so this is the fourth maxwell equation so the form let us see the what are the forms forms are del cross h equal to j plus del d del t and the integral form is line in closed line integral of h dl is equals to surface integral of j plus of del d del t ds so these are this is the differential form and this is the integral form let us now write, uh, let us see, I mean write the magnetic, I mean ampere circuit law also. This law states the MMF or magnetomotive force is equal, equal to the conduction current plus the time derivative derivative of electric electric displacement through any surface bounded by the path so this is the physical significance of this ampere circuit law so these four are the four laws or the four equations expressions are generally known as this Maxwell equation. So if somebody uh, asks you or this question appears, you have to write these four laws. And of course, this physical significance of these laws you uh, need to write also. And sometimes, as I said, if they ask the differential form, you have to write only this differential form. If they ask the integral form, you have to write this uh, integral form itself, right? Now let us discuss this wave equation for this conducting medium. So conducting let us start with the properties of this conducting medium so this conducting medium characteristics 
the characteristics of conductive medium there are two characteristics one is rho will be equals to zero another will be sigma and equals to zero that is you can write this j is equals to zero now why sigma uh, this uh, this rho is equals to zero because since charge resides only on the surface right so that means rho this volume charge density is zero because charge is residing only at the surface outer surface right and uh, this uh, sigma is equal to zero because j is also zero so these are the two properties of the conducting medium of any medium which is conducting in nature right so now so the maxwell equations because of these two conditions the maxwell equations will be will become equations becomes del dot d equals to zero del dot b equals to zero del cross e is equals to minus del b del t and del cross h that is equals to j plus del d del t so these are the say equation number one a this is equation number of one b one uh, c one d so this is the form of the maxwell equation that uh, we get for the condition of conducting medium because of this two properties right now now let us take taking carl of 1c right so what will happen that means this so del cross del cross e will be equals to minus del del t and del cross b right so this will be that by taking carl of expression number 1c so we are arrived here so that means so from here we can write del cross del cross e is equals to minus of mu del d del t del cross h why since b is equals to mu h right and again we can so this comes as so this will be del del e minus del square e we are using the properties here is equals to minus of mu del del t of del cross h right why because del of del cross of del cross e curl of curl of a vector that will be equals to del of del dot e minus del square e so you are using this property here so let us take this expression as our equation number 2 right also also since del cross e is equals to 1 by epsilon del dot d this is the relation between e del dot e or the divergence of uh, e uh, with the divergence of d so this so we can write thus del dot e will be equals to 0 why since d is equals to epsilon e that we have already studied and also by using equation number 1a that is this equation by using del dot d equal to 0 we can write that del cross e is equals to 0 right so uh, let us take this as our expression number 3 now let us write it here now from equation number 1d what appears del cross h will be equals to j plus of del d del t right so this we can write j plus of epsilon del e del t right so let us take this as our equation number four okay now what we need to do now putting three and four in two so we will express equation this three and four in our expression number two we will put it here so finally we get minus del square e will be equals to mm, minus mu del d del t j plus of epsilon del e del t so this expression we have got okay so now what we need to do just simply we will put this j equal to epsilon e in this equation here so we it appears as del square e will be equals to mu del d del t 
and mu e sigma e plus epsilon del e del t right and therefore we can finally conclude that del square e will be equals to mu sigma just let us make some space here so that you can understand i'm just making some space here so from here we can write that this will be like this del square e will be equals to mu sigma d del e del t plus of mu epsilon del del 2 e del t 2 so this is the final expression i mean there is some some calculations are there people may ask you to find out the wave equations in square uh, in case of conducting medium we'll just simply there are some few calculations are there so finally we will arrive after the calculation we will arrive here and this is your wave equation for conducting medium so you can expect to say sometime they ask you to write the or deduce the wave expression wave equation for conducting medium also or rather they can answer you give you some problem also which you can be solved by using this expressions right